Chris Christie claims Trump offered him the vice presidency multiple times, but it was Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump who vetoed it. President Trump repeatedly offered Chris Christie the vice presidency during the campaign, but it was his daughter and son-in-law who effectively vetoed the move, according to the ex-governor. Christie recounts details of his contacts with Trump in his new book, Let Me Finish, Trump, The Kushners, Bannon, New Jersey, and The Power of In Your Face Politics. The book, published by Hachette Books, will be on sale beginning on Tuesday. Christie writes that he made no secret about his interest in the vice presidency ever since he endorsed Trump during the Republican primaries, according to an excerpt from the book which was revealed by ABC News on Sunday. I don't think he was surprised by my answer, the former governor wrote. In late February, Christie became the first major GOP official to throw his support behind Trump. In the ensuing weeks, as it became clear Trump was the frontrunner, there was talk he was considering five or six candidates to be his running mate. In June, according to Christie, Trump called the then governor with a tempting offer. Christie writes that Trump asked him if he was ready. Single quote am I ready? Ready for what? Christie asked. You know what? Trump responded to Christie, according to the book. Christie writes that at that moment, the prospect of being Trump's running mate didn't feel like an exercise anymore or some theoretical possibility. It felt real, the former governor wrote. Are you asking? Christie said to Trump. No, no, Trump answered. I just want to know before I make my final decision, are you really ready to do this? Because you know, Chris, there will be a lot of bull asterisk 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 asterisk. There will be a lot of stuff you have to put up with. There will be a lot of scrutiny. And I just want to make sure that you and his wife Mary Pat are ready for that. We're fine, Christy replied. Don't you worry about it. We've been through plenty of scrutiny. This won't bother us. All right, Trump said. Well, I'm going to make my decision tomorrow. Moments later that same evening, Christie writes that he received a telephone call from a member of Trump's team. This individual said Trump discussed who his running mate would be with his aides and close relatives. The family is very upset that he says it will be you, the staffer told Christie. They are getting on a plane and flying to Indianapolis tomorrow morning to meet Donald and get him to go see Mike Pence again. If you've got any cards to play, you should play them now. Christie replied. I haven't played any cards this whole time. I'm not playing any cards now. If he wants to pick me, he picks me. If he doesn't want to pick me, he doesn't pick me. I'm not playing games here. Christie writes in his book that Trump flew to Indianapolis to offer the vice presidency to Pence. He writes that Fox News host Sean Hannity lent Newt Gingrich his private jet which flew the former House Speaker to Indianapolis so he could make his own pitch to be Trump snow. 2. Christie then writes, People I trusted told me that my tipster was exactly right. Family members, Jared and Ivanka especially, were upset that Donald seemed to be on the verge of choosing me. They flew into action in an 11th hour attempt to block that. Christie writes that Eric Trump was the only member of Trump's family who offered encouraging words. As whispers indicated that Trump was leaning toward Pence, Christie writes that he received another phone call from the Donald. Are you really sure you want this? Trump asked Christie, according to the book. Christie said he did not take that as an encouraging sign. Trump sounded as if he was looking for Christie to spare him the task of disappointing him by letting him down with bad news. Instead, Christie writes, to hell with it, I thought. I'm pushing for this. He told Trump, yes, I really want it. You know it's going to be a lot of scrutiny, Trump told Christie. Christie replied, Donald, you have to choose whoever you think is best. But I am not backing away. I'm ready for the fight. I want to beat Hillary Clinton. I've been in this with you since February. Let's go do it. I'm in. All right, Trump told Christie. I'm definitely making the decision today. I just want to make sure that you two are ready for this.
That same evening, Christie says he was informed by New Jersey state troopers that Pence flew into Teterboro, the Bergen County airport that caters to private planes. No, that P.S. twisk ass twisk ass twisk had me off, Christie writes. Donald had offered it to Pence, and he didn't even call me. So, I called Donald. Hey, Christie told Trump. The least you could do, when you made a final decision, is to let me know. I haven't made any final decision, Trump reportedly said. Christie asked, you haven't made any final decision? You haven't offered the vice presidency to anybody? Absolutely not, Trump answered. Well, then, explain to me why Mike Pence is landing at Teterboro in half an hour, Christie told Trump. I have no f asterisk asterisk asterisking idea, Trump told Christie. Turn on Fox News. Why? Christie asks. Just turn it on. I'll call you back. Trump then calls into Greta Van Sisteren's show denying reports that he had chosen Pence. I haven't made my final, final decision, Trump told Fox News. I've got three people that are fantastic. Christie writes that Trump then phones him. Do you believe me now? Trump asked the then governor. Christie writes, frankly, I wasn't sure what the stunt had proved. I just don't know what to make of Pence flying in on what? A half promise? Christie asks Trump. That makes no sense to me. I have not made my decision, Trump said. The next day, Trump called Christie to inform him that Pence was his guy. K. Christie told Trump. Said. Congratulations, Donald. Good luck. Good luck to you and Mike. Obviously, I'll be there to help you. Are you disappointed? Trump asked. Of course, I'm disappointed, Christie said, but these are your choices, not mine. You've got to understand, Chris, he said. Pence is out of central casting. There have been previous reports circulating about Christie being denied a key post in the Trump administration because of bad blood with Kushner. In an earlier excerpt released two weeks ago, Christie slammed Kushner for launching a political hit job against him to get him fired as the head of Trump's transition team and for keeping him out of the administration. Christie contends the president's son-in-law was acting out of revenge for Christie's prosecution of Jared Kushner's father, Charles Kushner, in 2004 when he was U.S. attorney for New Jersey, it was revealed on Tuesday. The former New Jersey governor lets loose on Kushner and gets his own revenge for being left out in the cold during Trump's time in the White House. Christie claims his knowledge comes straight from Steve Bannon, Trump's former campaign chief and White House counselor. When Bannon fired Christie from Trump's transition team at a meeting at Trump Tower in New York, Christie forced him to tell him who was really behind the move by threatening to go the media and blame Bannon instead. Christie reveals in his upcoming book, a copy of which was obtained by The Guardian. Steve Bannon. Made clear to me that one person and one person only was responsible for the faceless execution that Steve was now attempting to carry out. Jared Kushner, still apparently seething over events that had occurred a decade ago, Christie writes. The kid's been taking an axe to your head with the boss ever since I got here. Christie quotes Bannon as telling him about Kushner. Christie's prosecution of billionaire real estate developer Charles Kushner helped put him on the map. The elder Kushner plead guilty to 16 counts of tax evasion, one count of retaliating against a federal witness, and another count of lying to the Federal Election Commission. Charles Kushner's retaliation conviction had to do with a revenge plot against his brother-in-law William Shoulder a former employee turned witness for federal prosecutors. Charles Kushner hired a prostitute to lure Shoulder into having sex in a Bridgewater, New Jersey, motel room as a hidden camera taped the encounter. That tape was then sent to Shoulder's wife, who was Charles' sister Esther. The Shoulders, in turn, brought the tape to prosecutors, who tracked down the prostitute and threatened her with arrest. She turned on Kushner and revealed the plot. Christie subsequently negotiated a plea deal with Charles Kushner. The Todrick case not only put the elder Kushner in jail for two years, it caused great embarrassment to the Kushner family.
Jared Kushner, in a 2014 interview with real estate publication The Real Deal, talked about how his father's case affected him, my dad's arrest made me realize I didn't want to be a prosecutor anymore. The law is so nuanced. If you're convicting murderers, it's one thing. It's often fairly clear. When you get into things like white-collar crime, there are often a lot of nuances. Seeing my father's situation, I felt what happened was obviously unjust in terms of the way they pursued him. I just never wanted to be on the other side of that and cause pain to the families I was doing that to, whether right or wrong. The moral weight of that was probably a bit more than I could carry. While the book covers Christie's time in the New Jersey gubernatorial mansion in addition to his work with the Trump campaign, it's likely his talk of Kushner that will get the most attention. Christie recounts how Jared Kushner badmouthed him to Trump in an April 2016 meeting while Christie was in the room. He implied I had acted unethically and inappropriately but didn't state one fact to back that up. Christie wrote. Just a lot of feelings, very raw feelings that had been simmering for a dozen years. The former governor claims Kushner told Trump that it wasn't fair his father spent so long in prison, the elder Kushner served 14 months behind bars and the rest of his two-year sentence in a halfway house. Jared Kushner also insisted the sex tape and blackmailing was a family matter that should have been kept away from federal authorities, this was a family matter, a matter to be handled by the family or by the rabbis. Christie quotes Kushner as saying, but Christie does offer Jared Kushner a defense, of sorts, about Kushner's attendance at the now infamous June 2016 Trump Tower meeting when Kushner, Donald Trump Jr., and then campaign manager Paul Manafort met with a Russia lawyer with ties to the Kremlin who claimed to have dirt on Hillary Clinton. Christie wrote taking the meeting was merely dumb or, in the case of Kushner and Trump Jr., a sign of profound inexperience. But he does claim Kushner misjudged two Russia-related firings, that of National Security Advisor Michael Flynn in February 2017 and that of the FBI Director James Comey in May 2017. Christie writes that Kushner thought firing Flynn would end talk of links between the Trump campaign and Russia, it did not, and that firing Comey would not provoke an enormous shitstorm in Washington. It actually did. The president was ill-served by poor advice, Christie writes. The former governor also has amusing anecdotes from his relationship with Trump, including the president ordering his food for him, giving him weight loss tips and offering fashion advice. At his first meeting with Trump in 2002, at a dinner in the Trump Tower in New York, Trump ordered his food for him. The then-business mogul chose scallops, which Christie is allergic to, and lamb. Christie dislikes. Christie recalls wondering whether Trump took him for one of his chicks. At a dinner three years later, Trump told Christie to lose weight. Trump told him you gotta look better to be able to win in politics. In the 2016 campaign, Trump advised Christie to wear a longer tie as it would make him look thinner. Christie and Trump have known each other for 15 years. Christie attended Trump's 2005